Welcome to the AEO Shade. Ugh. What what day is it, Bogle? What is going on? What am I even saying? Welcome to Albion TV presents the AO Daily Show, your source of real news in an unreal world, keeping you up to date on the latest news, events, and the great community of Albion Online. Today is Monday, the 19th of August, and I am your host, Chosen, and with me today, uh, thank God, is somebody else so that they can talk instead of me, my co-host, Bogle. How are you doing today? Good morning, Chosen. Good morning. How are you? Are you back in the office, I see? I'm back in the office. I have a camera back up again. I'm once again tongue-tied on this uh, limerick that we have to welcome people into the Daily Show. I swear, I've said this thing 2,000 times, and I still screw it up once out of every uh, two times I do it. Ugh. But other than screwing up the introduction, I'm doing pretty good, mm -hmm. Bogle. I'm excited. Nice. We have a good show ready for people today. We have... Not a lot of news, but we have some interesting news. Right, right, yes. We do start with the official news today. Then uh, we have a guild spotlight for Les Coulté, a French guild. Then we have a few community news pieces, shoutouts and season, season 7 statements mm -hmm. by Scotter Verquet and Taya Preta. And we have some sad news for Infinite. Yeah. But let's yeah. start with also, the official news. Charles. We've got a little bit of other drama in there, too, that we'll sneak in here and there. But the official mm -hmm. news, yes. We'll start with the Guild Spotlight of Le Cote. How do you say that? Anybody in French in chat can help us out? Yeah, I just call it these guys. Le Cote. We had this argument whether or not we should call them Le Cote or Le Cote. Hmm. We don't know. Uh, but uh, they are French. They are a French mm -hmm. guild. They're one of the, the the many, 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 many French guilds that have uh, we've been spotlighting lately. It feels like half the guilds in this game have become French out of nowhere. What, what happened, Bogle? Did they all break up out of one group and just go, let's all go everywhere and spread our French wealth everywhere? Maybe they're just better at promoting themselves than other guilds. That could be it. That could be it. Interesting. Yeah, but... This spotlight today is a small guild. They apparently have an emphasis on on PvP and personal freedom. They have it is very French. Yes, yes, personal members. freedom. Mm. Yes. They were founded in 2018 in June. Their primary language is French, and they are a bunch of uh, red zone gankers. It seems. Oh, that's a good thing. I like it. I like a, a good gank guild. We have a, a number of those, and uh, I'm sure that they have become friends with our man uh, Stormlord uh, as of recently, uh, as he's out there preventing the gank guilds once again, now at his new oceanic time. These these guys look pretty tough, though, based they on do? The screenshots. And yeah, well, the they, they're all that. riding on dire wolves. That's pretty scary. I mean, I wouldn't want to deal with anybody oh. like that. That means that they uh, they're either ballers running deep in the silver or they are good at what they do and they don't have to worry about losing those dire wolves i think they're good at what they do honestly mm. they however say they mostly work in the royal zones around carleon for now they because they don't like to be chased around by zerks too much and they can operate quote unquote more efficiently <laughs> Um, and sometimes in the green portal, black zones, oh. hunting people. Yeah, they have one interesting thing. They apparently have their lore written out only in French, though, mm. in the forums. And they sort of role play as followers of the Morgana cult. Interesting. It's in game. Yeah. I, I like that. A little bit of RP. Ah, French role players. Different. I like it. Yeah, uh, da, da, da. and that's they are currently recruiting. I think um, they are having <laughs> in in. Now let me ask you. In the uh, th uh, news post, it says, "I will slip in this inside joke in the guild spotlight." Le cold recruit recruté le recruté It seems as a. Sort of I, I think it's the cult is reading. recruiting. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, yeah, the cult is recruiting, I guess, is kind of like a a joke, because isn't that what cults do? 
I also had to think about a other guild, so I was wondering who was first with that joke. I'm going to go with Fricks. But Fricks aren't... Well, are Fricks a cult? They're like a personality cult. They're like Vetus's personality cult, right? Hmm. hmm. Now we might be overstepping like five different things, but no, I think... Well, I, I, as, as, a, as a personality streamer, I mean, you know, like that's, you know, that's what Vetus is. He's a personality streamer because he's very interesting. People will, you know, follow him because of his personality, not just because of his in-game skills. He's fun to be around. That's what I mean. It's not like he's, I mean, you that, know, that's a good hypnotic either, stare, you know, just getting you to do the weird thing he wants you to do. Mm-hmm. Put the lotion maybe on for your those skin who, you, who are not interested in that those? American guy, a French cult might be more interesting for mm. your playstyle needs, especially if you are into the ganking and very small scale uh, PvP and dungeon diving gameplay. Then check these guys out definitely a recommendation also watch some of their videos they have a few very cool and fun yeah i'm gonna throw one up on the background while we just uh, go on to the next thing here so uh, we'll just let let cult uh go around in the back i think we have some mm-hmm. some cultists in chat right now which is kind of cool i like seeing that nice yeah other official news we do have a psa chosen we have elsa saying something about castles and scoring times. Mm. Do you wanna? <sighs> do I want to uh, pull that up onto the screen and uh, talk about this? Yes, yes, I do. Because apparently, Bogle, what happened? We had an announcement just last week. Oh, I feel bad because we're covering up the ganks, but uh, the news is more important than the ganks. They had a recent update, Crescival Patch 3. We announced that Castle and Castle Outpost scoring times have been moved from 19 to 20 UTC. However, there has been an issue, and the charge uh, change has not yet been deployed. The scoring times are currently still (laughs) at 19 UTC, despite (laughs) the in game user uh, user interface showing 20 20 UTC. UTC. Yeah, so don't be late to castles. Go ahead. What, what are they <laughs> and, saying? And it says, the new castle and castle outpost scoring times will go into effect with the coming reset day on August 31st. We apologize for the mistake and thank you for everyone who pointed it out. I bet you there's one person there who's not glad somebody <laughs> pointed it out. Yeah. yeah. The guy who's uh, at Gamescom right now who should be uh, at work fixing this mistake. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but that's our guess, right? That was our guess, right? Is whoever was responsible yeah. for this went to Gamescom and was like, I just want to go play Xbox. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> initially, I thought, you know, the dev team has a little stroll and does some press interviews and maybe, mm-hmm. you know, is promoting uh, this great game uh, around. And then suddenly one of them goes, hey, guys, um, about that change for the for the outpost timers, uh, you you put that in right, and then somebody in the room just drops his glass. I don't know. Mm. All we know mm. is they dropped something, and I would call it the ball, not the glass. Da-da-da-da. No, I, it happens, I guess. Oh, it happens. It, it's it's not a huge deal. I think everybody who's uh, involved in the castles, once they noticed it, there we are on such a how do I like. You are on a timer, right? basically. You get told mm-hmm. what to do, when to show up, and when to go, and how to get it done. Once mm-hmm. that's figured out, it's not like it's a problem anymore. Once the first person figured it out, Everybody game over. Knows, the yeah. people who need to know, know, and they're already right. on it, and they're, they've are they got their schedules back to you know what they were. It's not like... It's not even like it's it was changed. It's just that now that things things are still the same. There was an announcement. I mean, the the, the timer says prepared to change and then yep. rescheduled their events. Yeah. And I was like, whoops. Well, they still have the old things. Hopefully. Yeah. Hope, the, hopefully the they still have the is, old is, announcements. <laughs> the curious thing is why they put it off until reset. Mm. In, mm. in about what is that? 10, 12 11, days. Twelve days. Twelve days from now. Yeah. Hmm. Do you think they they want to keep the season, or is is the guy responsible really just on a 
on holiday? <clears throat> it is August, Bogle. Like, we could be honest. It is August. But I think it's probably something more to do with the change in the database and that it just makes it easier to have it all go together when the change goes into effect. And they probably didn't realize that somewhere in the database it was making a change. And as is always the case in programming, you change one little line and then you find out that you need to change 37 more. And one of those 37 lines that you have to change causes a cascade effect. That means you have to change 437 lines. And, uh, well, that well, can't be done in an afternoon, sir. Shout out to the SPI devs anyways. Yeah, I hope okay. you guys are having a great time over at Gamescom. Everybody who went, I heard that there's a, a good crew going. They're trying to meet up with you players. So if you are at Gamescom, and somehow still listening to The Daily Show because you're that darn dedicated, then uh, go check out your local uh, Twitter accounts, find the devs, and uh, hit them up on Twitter, and they will uh, try to hang out with you. There are a bunch of them there, including uh, Robin Henkis is there, I believe. So, But there's no official booth, right? No, there's no, no booth. Official... There's no booth. No. no. We have no booth. I was, I was hoping to go to see the guys, but uh, no, no booth. So No booth. Also, I have to do this this great show for you. Well, like Lupac does, you could do the show right from the stage. You know, get done with your DJing and then just go right into show. Yeah. No? Yes? Might be a little loud. Yeah. It'd, it'd be a little... It'd be cool. I, I would love to do a, a live show from like uh, PAX or Gamescom or E3 or something like that one day. Okay. But now, now that we've talked about... What's going on with our little community? Let's reach out to the larger community as a whole, Bogle. I know you've gotten some more uh, news back from people as you've been reaching out every day, trying to get people's mm -hmm. views on Season 7, telling us what's going on. What is going on with the guilds here in Season 7? A bunch of things, a bunch of things. First, uh, though, we have two very quick shout-outs. First... I want to mention that the famous Black Order Guild is the first guild of Season 7 to reach gold rank. Mm. Shoutouts to you guys. That happened uh, over the weekend. The second in the field has not yet reached gold. And um, yeah, it seems like they are still on a race to first. First of money, uh, Black Order, second money guild. Oof. Congratulations. Look at that. It's... Second shoutout goes to the great mundane of sun for hitting 100 spec in swords sword fighting <gasps> Yay. you hit 100 because... spec ah did he make an announcement bogle to tell all of us yes he yeah. went to the reddit and was like guys 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 look at me it's cool and then he posted his nice screenshot uh, where's the screenshot i want to show the screenshot give this guy his special uh destiny fulfilled and show everybody in the world that he has completed his destiny. He is right up there with um, Volkandin, having completed all of his achievements. Yes, destiny fulfilled. Sword fighter. Congratulations. Mandane. Mandane. Yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> but uh, two actual real interesting news. Oh. Of course, this is... This is <clears throat> we have a cool stuff. Uh, a cool stuff. <laughs> My a cool guide. Is, it's a guide. Yes. This is also on Reddit. Uh, I'll mm -hmm. throw it up here. We saw a pretty good guide uh, for beginners on escaping gankers. It seems to be written from, I don't want to call him a beginner, uh, but a, uh, a newer player perspective as it's, it's very, very basic. It teaches you just the most basic ideas of how you want to escape. Like, you know, paying attention to your map, understanding your build, uh, what to wear for a build, like, Deciding on which different cape you want to use, whether you want to use the the Fort Sterling cape, or do do you want to use the uh, the undead cape for the invisibility? I I personally use a Fort Sterling cape. I I, I do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Though I'll yeah. So though I could be honest, I don't I don't wear a cape, Bogle. I I, I use a specialty cape, you know, for gathering. I take the bonus. I don't know about you, Bogle. They did well. Um, Brave. We didn't mention the name yet. It's Myth King four oh, yes. five six. Yeah, he he does a really good job here. I would have to say it's a very good job. Do you want to go over some of the better points that he makes? Besides me just making I mean, fun of him. It's <laughs> it's it's basically just him uh, suggesting that you have the blood letter dagger in your main hand with the, either the mist collar or somebody in the thread actually recommends. 
um, the taproot as well. Mm -hmm. I think the taproot's a good choice. Also gives a, a few other good tips on you know potions and, and mounts as mm -hmm. you need a fast mount because you're mostly safe if if you you know can just can run away from people you're not yeah that's them. that's definitely he seems to be of the the position of run away don't stay and that's a very good position to take um i am i run on a slightly different method but yeah mist caller is very good for escaping and he goes through all the different ways in which you can use it and what you have to be careful for he also makes a couple other suggestions as to weapons that he says aren't quite as good um because they have mobility, but again, you don't want to get stuck in combat, which is what you, will happen when you use a double-bladed staff. Do you have anything else, Boom? Did you disappear? Hello? I think I've lost Bogle, guys. The internet may have failed him. Do you still have me here? Is the stream still up? Yes. Okay, guys. Well, at least you still have me. Bogle will be here soon. Yes, he gives a bunch of suggestions, as we said, like the offhand, such as Miss Caller. And then he talks about different choices for food. I'm always a pork pie guy myself because I'm always trying to honestly get the most I can carry on myself without going encumbered. Uh, I'm a dire wolf rider myself. I go deep in, go fast, get out quick, go find the... The, the highest points I can find, the best enchants I can find. I don't generally carry a lot when I go gathering. I just go and get the highest point I can find and grab it and get out of there. I do a quick run and get out. All right. It looks like Bogle will be back soon. His internet did go poof. But I think he's on his way back. Uh, potions. He recommends invis invisibility potions. That's what I do too. Uh, I find it's the best get out of jail free. Um, Sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I will do resistance if I'm staying and fighting because I'm often... Guys, I do gather with my one-handed curse build. And it's mostly me trying to get, like, unexperienced gankers to come after me and try to gank me while I'm gathering. Because they're like, oh, the gatherer will go attack the gatherer. <laughs> mm, it's fun. But yeah, we have those basic suggestions. Uh, they were very good. The whole thread is pretty good for newbies. And if you are a newbie, I definitely suggest going ahead and giving it a try. And uh, go ahead. I'll throw this up in chat. And we'll also have it in the uh, this description if you're listening to the podcast. You'll be able to find it. Personally, uh, there's like I said, there's a lot of good suggestions. One suggestion I would add is he talks about knowing your way out of a zone and being able to keep your eye on the map. One thing I do is that I will uh, pop my map in and out of Zoom so that I don't get hit in those little newbie traps. Often people will say, you know, you have to open your map and opening your map can get you killed because you open your map for just a second, see the whole big thing, you can run into a rock, into a tree. These things will slow you down just enough that it'll go ahead and get you ganked. And that's not really what you want to have happen. So if you go ahead and just use the little end, you know, like uh, not end, uh, the little plus and minus key in your little tiny map. That'll help you find what you're looking for and you'll do fine. You'll get around. All right. Now, uh, we do have some territory changes. If you guys have been paying attention to the show or the live show in the evenings, you know that we've had a few um, home plots up for grabs recently, including Toadwater Mound. I believe that was what it was. Oh, Toadwater. Now, these guys, they, they did their best. They uh, The Albion Choppers defended themselves three days in a row. They had a couple of very close matches on the third day. They even called in a few mercenaries, but it wasn't enough as uh, So Salty was able to take over. And, um, yeah, eviction notice is on. In a slightly less exciting eviction, June. Hello? Hey, Bogle, welcome back. Whew. I don't know what happened. So. Oh, it's the internet. I'm it's back. it's summer. There's storms. There's heat. All sorts of things take down the internet. But in a, a uh, we're talking about the home plots being taken down. And I just showed the So Salty one. Now, I'm trying to find the the one that June took from CIR. Where was that? It's up here somewhere, Bogle. I know it is. I know it is. It's Elm. Corpse? Elm Copes. 
Kapis. Elm Kapis. Kapis. Yeah. They didn't fight for this one, Pogo. No? No, Jun got it for free. CIR on the back foot, apparently. Not even able to get themselves up a team to fight against June. Not not good. I mean, June, yes. June is great. June has some great GVGers. It's got to be scary. It's got to be daunting. You know, it's it's tough to find a team that can fight against them. But to, to no-show, three days in a row and just let the home plot fall, mm, rough stuff, rough business. I mean, that sounds like a deal, does it? You know. Yeah, it's free with, deal. Instead of giving it... Instead of dropping it, I don't know. No, Maybe no, they're... it doesn't sound. I don't think it was a deal. CIR and June are not getting along. Mm. This was a, a straight takeover by June. June is trying to push CIR out and say you're done. They uh, they had some pretty harsh words for them, and uh, oof, some interesting stuff. What do I hear correctly in chat? Just dropped some news on us right now. It says that TC left. Oops, Bogle. If that is true, that is big. Let me go check. Take a look at that. Uh, I'm looking, but I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's there. A new alliance has bear would beat gorilla in the one versus one. Okay. Yeah. Well. It, let, let's see. Well, but see, if you're talking about bears versus gorillas, you're really talking about like uh, moon bears, right? Like that's the the bear that would fight against a gorilla. Both, you know, over in India there. Um, yeah, I think I think you could probably you could say that a moon bear could probably take a gorilla. Maybe you know they got the claws and stuff. Gorillas don't really have claws. They're just more of a, a brute force kind of thing. But if you know it got like a hold of a spear or something, or had like a rider. I would give the advantage to the gorilla. Okay. <laughs> Did you do the shout out yet for For who? The Taya Prita and Skateva Cat. No. Mm -hmm. I was I was talking about the, the city plots that were lost, the home plots that were lost. I haven't even talked about the cities yet. And have we have another oh. city fight tonight at one UTC. Okay. Do you want to so do I didn't the? Didn't miss much. No, you didn't miss much at all. I I barely got us out of the, uh, the tips, without making a complete disaster of it because I was like I, this is well below um, my learning level here on the on the okay. gathering. That's not how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna you want, fight. You want me to read these then? Yes, or? I do. I do want you to read these. Okay. Do you have any final words on the town plots? Otherwise, I am. Oh, the town plots got taken. The, the, Basically, one was a situation where one team was just better than the other team. Did a great job mm -hmm. of taking the home plot. So Salty did a great job. Showed up three days in a row. Choppers did a great job defending, but they were just not quite as good as the uh, So Salty okay. team. And in the other situation, like I said, CIR just never showed. They just It's basically the same thing they've been doing for the last nine months. No showing. Ouch. Okay. Then let's move on to... Season 7 statements. If you recall, I messaged a lot of guilds for their statements for the guild Season 7. Mm -hmm. Today I have a very brief one from Skata Vaket, a Swedish guild. They just write one sentence. We are the Swedish National Tax Board. Skata Vaket and we're here to bring the justice for those who don't pay. Watch Jeez. out for the territories in season seven. I'm scared. Yeah. yeah. The the guy who sent me the mes message is called Puffman. And he has like a stone avatar. So that, that fits kind of into a weird theme there. Hmm. Uh, shout out though to these guys. Okay. No, I'm, I'm all for giving them a shout out. They yeah. deserve one. Congratulations on taking the... T I mean, we were talking about this earlier. They They pay a lot of... Taxes over there, right? The Swedish? I think so. So you probably uh, have to have a pretty strong to army to take those taxes from people. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's got to be a rough one. Imagine the whole tax bureau playing Albion. Mm. Mm. That would that would be cool. Uh, you know, that would be really cool. That would be like, 
You, you know you're a cutthroat tax team if the game that you choose to play is Albion. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do an audit, boys. <laughs> but I have one more statement for season seven from the guild Ta Taja Preta Taya Preta in the, of the Win Alliance. Hello, I am the hand from Taya Preta, and there is the official statement for season seven. In this new season, we will try to improve our GVG team skills, focusing in get territories. Last season, our focus was Zergs, so with this new chances in GVG scenario, we will try to enter in competitive GVG scene. In the meanwhile, we are still looking for small scale Zerg fights, but now to get war comes for our GVGers. We are looking for allies and alliances that have the same mindset than ours. Last season, we push hard to get a good position on season rank, but in this season, it will not be our priority. We will focus on get territories and keep them with us and our alliances. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. Okay. They also do have a little bit of background information that they I need are more. a group of uh, Brazilian friends that play together since beta. And after passing for many guilds, they decided to create their own. And with free to play, their best chance was to increase their own numbers. And yes, they are recruiting. The requirement is 5 million total fame, though. Ah, not bad. So I'm looking at the map right now, Vogel. Sorry to take this in a different direction, but I'm looking and seeing mm -hmm. Arch has castles in Mercia. They have Heart of the Forest, they have Razorback, they have Gangrene. The castles and the the castle outposts. That's uh, cool. Shouldn't Oops be able to get that? Hmm. You'd think so. <laughs> I'm just. I, I, I gotta say, it sounds like Squad is super taking it easy. If Arch is getting castles in Mercia, that's I. I I don't even know what to say, man. I don't even know what to say. I, I mean, it's fairly close to their homeland, right? So they mm. can just pop over. There's not much left of their homeland, man. No? No. And they, they still have Torrid. I think that matters, right? <laughs> they Do they have Torrid, though? Yeah, I guess they do. They still do. Okay. Yeah, it's getting rough out there for the arch Ganistan. Jeez, they've been invaded. Mm. I heard BAs in Anglia. I don't believe it. I don't believe they're doing anything. They aren't even good enough to be an Anglia guild at this point. <laughs> Chosen leaves guild. They lose will to live. One, one castle in Anglia. Psst. Talking about leaving people, though, and sad news. Oh, we have yeah. some sad news. Yeah. Today. Well, we have a couple of pieces of news about people leaving. Let's start with the the sad news. Uh, on Friday, people who were listening to the show got to hear us do a, a bit of an interview with Exorgy or Zorgy, whatever you want to call him, of Infinite or Infinite, whatever you want to call them. And uh, they they folded. They folded. Like immediately after the interview, they were like, you really oh, no. CTA'd us to this interview? Ah, oh, forget this. We're done. And then they split up into two groups. Half went and joined Take Care. Half went and joined Exertion. Thanks thing you know, Take Care's quitting Oops. Oh my gosh, this is, it was like a cascade effect. It was brutal. I, I, that interview was just the, the downfall of Oops. How, how would you have figured an interview with Zorgi turns really into the downfall of Oops? Well, because now Take Care has left. And Take Care was taking care of Oops. In the ZVZ situation, allowing them, you know, to push for first place. Well, now it's going to be a completely five-man force doing it. Well, you know, six five-man forces. It's going to be interesting. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Without their manpower, I'm, I'm intrigued. But we wanted to talk about Infinite, not about Oops. Yes, Infinite has Infinite has uh, rolled itself over into exertion and into take care. It's done. It's folded. One of the, the oldest... Longest running guilds in all of Albion, right up there with Sun and Conflict mm -hmm. and Done. 
I mean, you could and, put uh, KFC in there, kind of, but KFC is kind of like taking a couple breaks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you do you have any statements or messages sorry? from from the guy? Or? Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to break up your guild. I shouldn't have done the interview. <laughs> Wait, why are are we the new guild spotlight curse shows? I think we are. I think I think no. I, no. I, I I've. I have interviewed Torther twice, Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And he has said he was leaving Albion seven times and is not leaving Albion. He has has stated he's still staying. He was angry. Mm -hmm. He was irritated. He needed needed some time to think. He needed to write Mm -hmm. a fake Mm -hmm. email and 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 a fake statement to his guild and alliance saying that they were leaving and doing something new. He needed to Mm -hmm. do that. But he feels better now. And now, instead... He's kicking the crap out of KFC. Apparently, he says he's he, he he's uh he's down in KFC all by himself. He went and he got the family size bucket, polished that thing off. He's good. He's good. Four so plots, I believe they took. There from might KFC. be a chance for Infinite to come back, or oh, there's always a chance for Infinite to come back. And it sounded like they Infinite had actually when they left, they put all of their money in escrow. And they said, let's save this for a rainy day when we come back. Uh, Escrow. It, it means you put your money aside for a later time. You can't touch I it know, now. Who would you give it? I believe he Zorgi is holding it himself. Oh. Or at okay. least that's my guess. Like Zorgi is just uh-huh. holding it in some, in like a, a mattress somewhere on some guild island. And uh, just shoved it in there. I, I think okay. they'll come back one day. But... As you know, and we've talked about this a, a, a thousand times, when when you run a guild for a very long time and your guild mm-hmm. isn't doing super well, it gets very, very stressful, especially when you have like a, a larger guild that, you know, does a lot of work. Mm-hmm. It gets stressful. It's very hard for one person to do all the work. And for him, I think it was just too much. And real life and in-game life combined, there just wasn't enough time. And when you have to give up one... The best choice is to give yeah. up the in-game life, not the real life. Don't give up the real life for the for the guild life. Give up the guild life. You can always come back and make the guild again. It will be a little harder, I guess, the second time around. Or actually easier because you know what you're doing. But coming back is always an option, right? Yeah. But uh, that said... Is that everything we have on the show today? I think we had one other thing. One other? Okay. Did I? No, I, we already covered Torthor, and uh, he 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 did take down his uh, his statement. As as many people know who read the Reddit's, Torthor had made uh, some claims about leaving, but he's back, and I I can understand this. Like I said, it's super stressful, but Torthor I has something different than what Zorgi had. Torther has people mm-hmm. helping him out, helping him run mm-hmm. his alliance and making it so that he doesn't have to do it all by himself. And when he has a moment, we could call it, uh, he has some very good people who are there besides mm-hmm. him who can help him a little bit and help him get through those hard times and, and get through it and, and really come through it strong in the end and take down KFC. That's his plan. That's his goal. Take down KFG. You're gonna get those mm-hmm. that Kentucky Fried Chicken. I mean, you need you need a group to to run a guild. You can't you, you can hardly do it by yourself. Hmm. All the better if you all like the same food. Yeah, it definitely helps if you all like the same food because you that way you can plan a, a trip together. But for those of you who are like, why are you guys rambling on when you could just end the show? We will do that right now for you, and we will end the show because Bogle. We've got more shows to do today. And in order to get to those shows, we have to end this show right here and then get to that overtime segment where we answer your questions and answer your queries and stand in line and wait for you to ask them. Isn't that right, Bogle? Yes, yes, yes. This is the Albion TV AO Daily Show. You can listen to us every weekday at 18 UTC for about half an hour, Mm -hmm. where we discuss news, community news, other things, some drama sprinkled in between. We will then go on to talk uh, in the overtime to Twitch chat and then even move further on with some live 
crystal GBG action at 19 UTC and 20 UTC following after. You can listen to this show as a podcast as well on Albion, uh, on Albion, on soundcloud.tv forward slash Albion. Mm. Soundcloud.com. Soundcloud. Soundcloud. No, sound, <laughs> soundcloud.com forward slash Albion TV. Uh, we yeah. are also on the YouTubes, yeah. but we haven't figured out how to change the name on the YouTube sites yet. So we're still working on that. Clearly, we're professionals. You can uh, find us by just typing in Albion TV uh, into YouTube and you'll pop up with all our shows. But the easiest way, the most effective way, the best way to find us is to just tune in every day at 18 UTC right here on twitch.tv forward slash Albion online. And then just hang out with us for a couple hours because we're going to hang out with you guys for another uh, 25 minutes and then another hour and 20 minutes after that. But first, I got to take a short break, go turn on the AC, get a drink of water, and uh, relieve myself. Bogle, do you have anything else to say before we uh, wrap this up? How long do you need for the live people? I I need like one, two minutes. Okay, cool. Then we will be back in three minutes. Sounds good. Introducing Season 7. Contribute to Season Points for your guild in new ways by completing guild challenge tasks. Assemble your guildmates 